All right, to say that this is a thrill for me to be sitting with Ellen Burka and Petra Burka is an understatement. So we're talking all about worlds. 50 years ago, I cannot believe it, little Petra Burka was on her way to the World Championships. So 10 days out or so from the competition, what would you guys have been doing? Figures. Going to, yeah, <laughs> lots and lots of figures. figures. Going to the World Championships in Prague. If you were at this point getting ready to leave, what were the last minute things that you were doing? It was absolutely so suddenly, we didn't even know what to do. So here we were, Peter had to go to World suddenly. I really didn't expect it. Then I was there with my little younger daughter. She was just 13. What shall I do with her? Well, I'll take her along. Then there was the big surprise. I had to buy a ticket for Petra and I had to pay for it myself. Uh, so I had to wow. pay for her ticket to skate for Canada at Worlds. <laughs> and my ticket, I mean, I had a daughter's ticket. And then we kind of disappeared, but they said, what shall we do with school? So we'll take all our school books with us. So we packed plus the school books and then we entered Malton Airport and our luggage was so heavy. He said, no school books. And the kids <laughs> says, yay! <laughs> <laughs> they were left behind. <laughs> so Astra was a skater as well. Yeah. And Petra. So you did not expect after the national championships that you would be going to Worlds. So what did it feel like? And how old were you? You know what? It was so long ago. I was only 15. I can't remember. <laughs> so really? It was that long ago. I, I remember being in Prague for Worlds, but I can't remember how I felt. But I know it was part of the path that I was going towards, and I knew what I wanted to be, and that was world champion. So step one. I remember you telling me, Ellen, that you ended up as a coach a little bit by accident, that you were a single mom having to raise two children, and so you got on the ice and started coaching. Yes. So at the time, you're training two skaters, uh, two daughters, rather, and, and you've got this one on the fast track to the world championships. What were the challenges like with ice time, with support, with uh, getting things done uh, 50 years ago? Well, it was not easy. Because yes. first of all, before we went to Worlds, Peter won the Junior Canadian Championships the year before. So it was quite a serious situation, preparing maybe she might go to Worlds, we didn't know. So I had to train her on rented ice, which was very expensive because I was teaching skaters. And of course, I made my living with it, so I couldn't teach Peter while I was making a living. So I had to rent ice, but I was very lucky. I was actually teaching the daughter of Con Smice, and she was trying a test, and Con was sitting next to me, and he asked a question, how do you train? Because what do you do with Peter? I said, well, I have to rent ice. He says, don't worry. Maple Leaf Gardens is open for you from 7 to 10 in the morning, and you can have it. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. wow. You don't hear that anymore. No. no. So what was it like to be on the ice from 7 to 10 at Maple Leaf Gardens? Well, it was uh, the center of hockey, and I was a big hockey fan, so I was very excited. <laughs> but when I would start at 7, all the sweepers were sweeping, all the, the dirt from the night before. Dust. The dust and dirt and noises, but that was kind of fun. But all that clean ice. And the best part was, after I did my figures, I would do free skating, and the Leafs would start lining up to get ready on the ice. So that was my time to show off a little bit. I would do some nice big jumps, and they were in awe, and sometimes they'd come on the ice and try to do what I did, and we had a race, and I beat them, and things like that. So it was very inspiring. I loved the fact that I had a little audience, and they were the Maple Leafs. Now, I read somewhere that when you did figures, your mom used to teach you uh, your school lessons by rote. So yes. as you were doing, um, is that the truth? We were rehearsing uh, homework. She was doing her figures and she had to recite a poem she had to do in school. Now tell me a little bit about the castanets and figures. <laughs> oh, that was another story that was earlier. That was way more earlier. I was in my Spanish period and I took Spanish dancing. And of course I played the castanets. So of course I took the castanets onto the ice, put my Spanish music on at six in the morning and my skaters had to do their figures, and I always remember in a double three, change double three, they had to turn three and turn, and I clicked with my castanets just before they had to turn, so they learned to click. <laughs> the click was there, they had to turn. It was ridiculous, but it worked, and I had a fun. wonderful time clicking my castanets, playing the music. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever gets you through. It too. Well, of course, because yeah. you change it up, that's Six for in sure. The morning. <laughs> so when you got to Prague, this was your first trip to the World Championships with a yes. skater, not as a skater yourself, but with a skater. Yeah. So um, team leading, uh, lots of support. What, what was it like? No support okay. <laughs> whatsoever. In those days. So yeah. you were on your own because on it was all very I didn't new. know what to I do. I bought her ticket, I bought my ticket. I went there and 
Yeah. The hotel was okay. I think yep. the hotel was paid for, for Peter could stay in a hotel, and I think I could stay in a, I can't remember that. And I remember going on a streetcar to the rink. <sighs> yeah. Yes. It must have been a streetcar. Yeah, street car. I remember no that. Yeah. that time. And it was a little practice ring, and it was a big ring, which was gorgeous. It was beautiful with flowers. The practice ring was a disaster with hills. Right. But tell <laughs> what happened when I tried to do figures. Yeah. You had to always make sure that the hill went down when you went to your center so that you had enough speed to get to the center. That reminds me about the Davos competition. We have to mention that one. Yeah. Too. <laughs> the Davos, Switzerland? Yes. Okay. In a blizzard. <laughs> you had a blizzard? Oh, and you were skating outside? Oh, gosh. Oh, many yeah. times. We not not in Prague. Outside. Except Prague. Prague was inside. And Prague so was, was Dortmund. Inside. Yeah. And then the next year, Cortina was all 20 below zero outside. A disaster. The next to Brotman was fine inside. Dortmund, she yeah. always skated well inside. It was always a disaster outside for her. She couldn't yeah. skate outside. No, you had to it's too cold. Figure out where the wind was blowing and make sure when you set up your figure that the wind would blow you back to your center. Sunglasses. Figure out how to skate in the shade and the sun. Sometimes it was very hard ice on the, the shady part and then very mushy on the other part. But Prague was indoors. But that practice rink was pretty wild. It was dark. That and was in, uh, in, in On an island. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it was a rink where you didn't want to be. And, the and tell, about the, tell about the, um, the night that I went there to okay. practice. Okay, there was an <laughs> evening practice, and that was for the group we were in. I have no idea who was in that group. And of course, everybody knew there was bad ice, so they didn't even go there. And me, the Greenhorn, of course, <laughs> went very dutifully there with Peter <laughs> to do our free skating practice. So I come there, and we are the only ones. And the manager of the, the rink was full. There were 5,000 people seated, sit, seated in that rink. And the manager came to me, was wringing his hands, and said, Mrs. Berger, Mrs. Berger, I don't know what to do because she's the only one here. And all these people came here and paid even entrance fee. Could you help us? So she had to entertain these 5,000 people for one hour, <laughs> do every jump for them with a microphone. Do oh, with a I can't remember oh, that I part. I hold the microphone oh, you to explain it to them. We did spins. We did I think we did program. figures, too. Yeah, uh, yeah sure I think did. I remember doing figures. <laughs> <laughs> we did the long program. We did, I don't know, We did an exhibition. <laughs> One hour. That is unbelievable. That unbelievable. That's really old days. That <laughs> is amazing. Yeah. And then from there, did you tell me that you did some sightseeing after the competition? Where did you end up? What was your result in 1962? Well, I was fourth in figures and second in the free, which was a big right surprise. Right the world champion. Yeah, big surprise, uh, big surprise to do so well. My mom had said to me when I went into the figures, because I never did figures or got good marks in figures in Canada, she said, be ready, you might be at the bottom. First figure, 13th place. And we're, look at each other. And then it just went better and better and better. Eleven, seven, seventy fourth place. I said, what happened? <laughs> I just did my normal figures. That <laughs> figures you're good at worlds. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you know what maybe people don't understand is um, that there used to be six figures skated. Yes. So, um, and when you times that, however many skaters, 30 oh, skaters or whatever, each days. figure, yes, I'm sure it, it took did. took days. You do a figure, have lunch, do a figure, have dinner, go to bed, wake up the next morning, do more. Horrible. It would take forever. And we had to go around the tracing more than uh, years later. I think it was eight times we had to go around. Six times. Eight. But on figures? Yeah, the one foot eights. Oh, oh that's possible, yes. Yeah, like it was, it, it took forever. But I remember a competition in Vienna. I had a boy and a girl, and the girls did figures in the morning, the boys in the afternoon, two figures. I, for three days, we did figures. I stood in that room for three days, always till the six figures were finished of the girl and six figures of the boy. Oh, three days. It's a long time. Yeah. Way, it's, it's a long time. time. Things have changed. Do you think the And I'm skating outdoors for free skating. Uh, not indoor, not outdoors for, fig uh, for figures and for skating. Was indoors, outdoors. Oh, but that was Vienna, yeah? That was yeah? the best in a rainstorm <laughs> and a windstorm. The people were sitting with their umbrellas, <laughs> which blew upside down. <laughs> and the, po the Popals had to skate, they were the world champs that had to skate their program, stood both with an umbrella over their head and were announced. And then they gave their umbrella to whoever and skated their program <laughs> in the wind and. <laughs> Do you Rain. Know what, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that takes real guts to do what you That's had to do. That's outdoor skating. Yeah, yeah. And then have to do it with the outdoor elements.